In this video, we're going to check out Google Chrome on the Nexus 7 tablet running Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. And we're going to check out the brand new Google Handwrite feature for tablets. So let's get to it. Let's jump straight into Google Chrome on my tablet here. And as you can see, I've been using it, but let's take the tour anyway. It starts off with tip number one, search. Search and navigate from the same box. Choose from results that appear as you type. So if you use Chrome on your desktop, you should be familiar with Chrome on Android. Now Chrome for Android has been out for ice cream sandwich devices and above for several months now. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those devices, you know all about this already. Let's swipe to the next tip here, which is tip number two, open and scroll tabs. You can open unlimited tabs and scroll through to find the one you want. So you basically just scroll through all your tabs by moving your finger on your tabs up top here. And I have quite a few of them open already. Tip number three, switch tabs. Slide your finger from the edge of the screen to switch tabs. So basically, if you slide from the side of the screen, you can switch tabs. Now you can also change the tab positioning by long pressing the tab and moving it to wherever you want. Tip number four, sign in. Sign into Chrome to see your open tabs, bookmarks, and Omnibox data from your computer and other devices. Now this is a really cool feature because you can go from your laptop browsing the internet on Chrome to your tablet browsing the same web pages that you are browsing on your laptop. And you can also go from your tablet or laptop to your cell phone and pick up where you left off. Just as long as you're signed in to your Google account while using Chrome. So it's really a cool feature and doesn't lock you down to a particular device. Let's check what tip number five is, incognito. Browse in private with incognito tabs. Pages you view won't appear in your history or leave traces like cookies. Touch the tab switcher icon to switch in or out of incognito mode. So to pull up an incognito tab, you just go over to your settings over here. You click on new incognito tab and then you're in incognito mode. And then if you wanna switch back, you have this box here, you just touch it, and it brings you back to your non-incognito mode. And then if you want to go back, just click on the box again. And there you go. You're ready to go. It says search or type URLs to start browsing. Now, unfortunately, Chrome for Android and even iOS does not support Flash. In fact, Android Jelly Bean doesn't support Flash at all which to me is a big drawback. Now it's not because I'm a big fan of Flash, but I am a big fan of being able to access everything on the internet, not just some of the internet. And that's generally a drawback of mobile devices and mobile OSs. And even though Flash didn't function perfectly on Android, I liked having it there. But we'll go into that a little bit more in depth when I actually review the Nexus 7. So stay tuned to my channel for that. So we've gone over the basics, but let's see how Chrome actually functions on this device. So as I mentioned, I have a lot of tabs open up top here and you can scroll through them and then just jump to one of them. So you have your Omnibox up here that you can put a search term in or a URL and you can bring up the keyboard to type that in. and do your search from here. Or if you want, you can use the voice search. Now you have a microphone icon down here on the keyboard, or you have your microphone icon up here in the Omnibox. Either one will work. If you want to save a finger click, use the one in the Omnibox. Now on the keyboard here, you'll notice that it's your characteristic Android 
keyboard and you have your dot com button down here that's always nice to have if you want to hide the keyboard just click on this button here it brings it back down and let's check out the voice search on this device Android Jelly Bean so there you go I love voice search on Android more often than not I'll use it instead of typing but if you're in a situation where you don't want to use the voice search or you don't want to use the keyboard, you can actually use handwriting on this device, which is pretty cool. Now all you need to do to initiate the handwriting option is go into your settings. Click on your settings cog in the upper right hand corner and go to search settings. Now you probably can't read it here because it is kind of small, but right on top on search settings in the third selection down here is handwrite. Right now it's on disable. Let's pinch to zoom this out here. But we're going to enable it. And then we're going to hit save down here. Hit OK. So you might have noticed a little bit of an animation on the bottom here. And that was Google Handwrite. You have a little cursive G down here, and if you click on it, it enables you to actually write with your finger a search term. So let's try this out. Ooh yeah. The new Android game console that's coming out. So that's pretty cool. You can actually write out your search term. Again, personally, I'd probably use the voice to text mostly, but it's really cool to have a lot of different options. Now, I've been showing you this in portrait mode, but it also does work in landscape. So there you go. Now, the only thing I do find that when you have this in landscape mode and you do a search, your keyboard takes up a lot of the screen. Now, normally that's not a big problem when you're doing a search, but if I'm answering YouTube questions, it kind of just leaves me a little bit of space to see what I'm doing. Not a big deal. And when that happens, I tend to use it back in portrait mode. So the performance of Chrome on this device is pretty good. When you scroll up, it's very smooth. Pinching to zoom, very responsive. Now, since this is a 7-inch screen, you might run into a situation where you're going to hit a link, especially on a web page like this, that's very small. And let me show you what I'm talking about. If I'm going to go up to here to my Tech Harvest page, and I click on it, I can bring up some options here to go to my channel, which is this page, or go to my video page, or my inbox. I'm going to go to the video page. And right away, you see a zoom feature where it zooms in on the links so you can make sure you're pressing the right thing. So I'm going to hit Video Manager here and it's going to take me straight to that. And the one thing I like about Android versus iOS is that I can actually answer messages in my inbox on YouTube straight through the browser where you cannot do it on iOS. As you can see here I have several different messages in my inbox and I'm going to click on one of them here and let's see I'm going to go to see all comments and these are all the comments for that video and if I'd like to I can hit the reply button over here and reply to the message again that's something I can't do on iOS and it's just one of those things that personally make this device more useful than my iPad so that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.